Here's our original non-homogeneous system from the demo. We want to write this as a matrix equation, AX equals B, and solve it using appropriate technology. Okay, so I'm going to have a coefficient matrix A. Okay, so my coefficients for x1 are 1, 0, 2. For x2, I have 4, 0, 8. For x3, I have negative 2, 3, negative 4. Oh, that's x3. Um, x4 is negative 3, negative 3, negative 6. Um, and then multiply by my unknown coefficients, I'm sorry, my unknowns, which are x1 through x4. And that, so that's a times x equals b, and b is 6, 0, 12. Okay, so to solve this using technology, um, I'm going to row reduce. I'm going to augment the coefficient matrix with the 6, 0, 12, and row reduce, and I get the following. 1, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 5, negative 1, 0. Augmented with six zero zero. Okay, so now I translate this to equations, and then I'm going to um, move it into parametric vector form. But I'm going to start by just translating the augmented matrix to equations: x one plus four x two minus five x four equals six. X three minus x four equals zero. And my last row t gives me nothing. It just says 0 equals 0. OK, so which variables are free? So my basic variables are ones that have um, a pivot. So I'm going to underline my pivots. Pivots are the first non-zero entry of each row once you're in reduced row echelon form. So my basic variables are x1 and x3, the columns that contain the pivots. My free variables are x2 and x4. OK, so to write this in parametric vector form, my solution is a vector x1, x2, x3, x4 equals. And I'm going to have a vector for each unknown I'm sorry, for each free variable. And then I might need to add one more vector to hold any constants that um, don't have a variable attached to them. OK, so I'm looking at x1 to start. I want to know what does x1 equal. So I go look at my equation that has x1 in it, and I want to solve for x1. So it's negative 4x2, because I'm moving everything to the right-hand side except for x1. Solving this for x1 in my head. I get negative 4x2, so I put a negative 4 here because that's going to be multiplied by the x2. And then plus 5x4, because again, adding it to both sides. And then I have a 6 for a constant x2 is free, <clears throat> which means um, x2 can be anything. x2 just has to equal x2. So I'm going to put a 1 here so that this equation will say x2 equals x2, and then a 0 for the x4 and a 0 for the constant. x3 equals x4, so x3 is 0x2 plus 1x4 plus 0. And x4 is free, so I just need the last line to read x4 equals x4. My last entry is to be x4 equals x4. So I have 0, 1, 0. All right, next I want to take each of the free, vari free variables to be 0 and check that we have a particular solution to the non-homogeneous system. OK, 
Okay, so each of the free variables will be zero. So I have negative four, one, zero, zero. Instead of x2, I have a zero, times zero. Plus five, zero, one, one, times zero, plus six, zero, zero, zero. And that's going to come out to six, zero, zero, zero. And I will leave it to you to check. This is your x1, x2, x3, x4 that if you plug into all three of these equations, the value of x1, x2, x3, and x4, all three of these equations will be true. Okay, so to describe this set of solutions geometrically, we're gonna use the words through and parallel to. So I wanna point out that this Without the six zero 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 vector, this bit was the solution to the demo where I was solving the homogeneous system where this was zero and zero and zero. So this is the solution to homogeneous system. And we described that um, in the demo as a plane. That is a plane containing those two vectors or those two points and the origin. Um, and then what does this what does this new little chunk add? So if you have a plane and you add six to every x1 coordinate, you're shifting the entire plane in the x1 direction by six units. So we're going to create a plane that's parallel to this one that we discovered in the demo um, and goes through the point 6000 instead of the origin. So it goes, it's a plane through 6000 and parallel to the plane from the demo. So the solution sets look very similar, right? We have the solution set to the homogeneous system, and then all we have to do is add to that this 6000, which was one particular solution of the non homogeneous system. Okay, so as part of question one, we solved this system and found it to be consistent. That there was a solution, there are infinitely many solutions, um, which means that 6012, which is the right hand side here, 6012, is in the span of the columns of the coefficient matrix, which means that 6012 can be written as a linear combination. of the columns of the coefficient matrix. Question three, can any vector B, B1, B2, B3, in R3, be written as a linear combination of the columns of the coefficient matrix A? So that is, do those four vectors span R3? All right, so we were given a hint here. I, I took the coefficient matrix A and augmented with a generic B1, B2, B3 and row reduced. So given this result, I can say, yes, there will always be a solution. There's, uh, sorry, I cannot say that there will always be a solution because it's possible that this would be inconsistent based on the last row. Right, because that last row says that zero equals negative two B one plus B three. So anytime this is not zero, we've got an inconsistent system. So if this is true, then we get then the system is consistent, but if negative two B one plus B three is not zero, the system 
is inconsistent. So for example, um, negative 2b1 plus b3 equals 0. So if I have 1 and 2 here, that would be that would be 0. Didn't mean to do that. Let's say I have uh, 1 and 1. Then negative 2b1 plus b3 is not 0, so the system will be inconsistent. And the second entry can be anything. 